um, hopefully everybody's working around doing it. Very cool. Bear with me while I try to figure. Oh, let's see. I can hear myself on the recording. So, huh. okay, hold on. Okay, let me know if that's any better. Um, it should be. I can hear myself through Facebook, so I'm not sure if that made a difference. I can hear myself. Okay. I have no idea what was going on, but we're better now. So I will go. We have uh, Laura Rock Smith. Good morning. Brenda, good morning. Dale Ann, good morning. Happy Easter. Um, this is what I get for just barreling forward instead of reading the chat. Uh, Lizzie, good morning, Lizzie. Kimberly, good morning. Um, 
Let's see. Laura Rocksmith was missing people. She judged at a model horse show. That's exciting. We haven't had model horse shows here yet. It's been a little bit. Uh, Tommy, good morning. Jennifer, good morning. Thank you. Serene River Model Horses. Yay. Okay, we're, we're in business now. Sweet. Okay, so what I was saying was... <laughs> I'll go back and repeat. Um, I have tater updates for you. Um, if I can... And the camera, and the camera. Whole bunch of biters that will be going out shortly. So I took a little bit of a break and wasn't able to get a bunch done in the last little bit. Um, they are very challenging on my mental state. Um, each pony is. Yeah, we've we've discussed the biter situation before. Um, so yeah. I took a little bit of a break so that I could recover my brain. So I didn't want to jump off bridges because that doesn't help anybody. And then, um, yeah, so we're back. Yay, back. Ah, there's only a few more to go. It'll be fine. We'll get there. Um, yeah, so I have that. I want to show you the mold for a tater because I always kind of forget that you guys don't get to see all the back end stuff. And sometimes that's interesting. Uh, so this is. <clears throat> Tater mold, the um, pulled mane bang tail version. So you get to see what that looks like on the inside. It's about 30 to 40 pounds, just the mold. It's pure silicone in there. I mean, you can see it's got some heft to it and some flex. So, oof, yeah, I'll show you the inside in a second. And then I have the lattice main um loose tail version of tater to show you guys he's going into a mold right after this guy so this guy's done now slapping the silicone sounds fun um <laughs> uh yeah so i'll get to show you that and the lattice main the lattice main post that i just showed you had 1.4 thousand views on it which is pretty crazy a bunch of normal horse people were seeing it and commenting about how it's crazy to do like little latticey bands on something that small versus a real horse. So that's kind of neat. We have Gail. Good morning, Gail. Um, Facebook is doing, I don't know how to control that. I don't have a way to control that through here. That's a Facebook being a Facebook thing. I think you can turn it off. If you go to the bottom corner, there should be something in the bottom corner where you can poke it and turn off. I think it, Show CC maybe. Let's see if I can find it without messing things up. Yeah, so if you go here, oop, to the little duty there, and then click captions, you can turn them off. And then you don't have to see what it's trying to guess that I'm saying. Although that might have helped when you couldn't actually see what I was saying. So there's that. Um, happy Easter. Yeah. So can't have any more of that. No jumping off of bridges. That is not allowed. Um, almost done. Yeah, we're very, 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 very close. It's just each, as the molds get older, um, it just takes more time and she's already a pain in the butt and I apparently expire when we do a difficult casting like that at a certain point. Um, and then because the molds are older, the face needs extra work when they come out of the molds and oh yeah, but each and every single one that comes out of the studio gets a whole bunch of extra love. Now my thingy's all messed up. Gets a whole bunch of extra... My camera's like, yeah, no, I give up on life today. Um, gives a whole bunch of extra love. They're all personally, like, tweaked and fixed because um, there's a seam along the face that needs to be redone. Um, yeah, so they all get extra personal love from me, which isn't the, the case with most resins. So there's that. Um, yeah, seeing molds and what goes into them is really interesting. I will show you guys the inside. Um, let's see. So maybe I'll do that first. So this is smooth on silicone. Um, normally we would use dragon skin and diet, uh, but Chris really likes using its 
mold star um, and mold max is what a lot of the hobby uses so it kind of depends on your own personal preference this one has you can i'm gonna try and show you guys <laughs> a little bit of squish to it so here you can see any silicone will have squish so you got to be careful um and be mindful of if it's got squish to it you have to when you put it in the rotocaster or however you're going to be like closing the mold and pressurizing it mold straps or however you're going to do that um need to be mindful of distortion so that's a thing um the harder silicones it's harder to pull the castings out and they might not last as long but these ones it's kind of um the opposite so the it'll last a little bit longer but you got to be more mindful of how you're pressurizing it and how you've built your mold because pressure this way um sideways on the mold so like on a horse like this if you have a seam or a um, part of the mold that's meeting more at an angle that's more likely to distort so something like this if you put pressure down on this it's more likely to push in a different direction than something that's up and down that won't distort as bad. So it's a whole science and art to itself, but you open her up and you get something like that. So this mold hasn't actually been used yet. This is fresh. So you can see the ridge around the outside that locks the mold together and holds all these seams kind of closed um, and aligns them so that you're not getting really bad flashing on it. Everything's kind of the opposite of what you'd see in the actual horse. These keys will lock the mold into place too. So it's kind of like Lego where it just snaps into place. Um, yeah, this one's only a two-part mold. Normally, if you had a normal position of a horse where the legs were kind of more together, you would end up having to put another part right here in the center. And then you would have seams on both sides of the belly, whereas Tater does not have that. You can see his little pull tail. And we vacuum um, seal or vacuum chamber our silicone seal. So I posted videos of that before where the bubbles kind of bubble up so that you don't get bubbles in this because bubbles in this will result in little tiny um, pebbles, kind of their little balls in the resin in the casting. And this is the other side. So you can see his hair kind of underneath there and his ears. So we'll soft set areas like the ear or um, where we put the wires in the legs. And that just means putting a little bit of resin in there for if we we're doing a wire. It would be resin in the leg. And then you let that cure a little bit until it's a little bit solid. And then you lay your wire in and a little bit more resin to, to stick it all together. And what that does is it keeps the wire from being on the surface. Um, and then you'd soft set the ears so that you don't lose your ear tips um, and any other tricky spots. So if there's spots that don't want to cure properly, um, you don't get the same sprues. You can add sprues to something like this, but because it's going in the rotocaster, it's rotationally spinning the whole horse to coat the outside so that you get a hollow center. So your casting's light and not super heavy. Um, and you can sometimes see some places will do sprues in areas, even in rotocast, if there's a tricky spot where they need the resin to cycle. If it's a crazy position, sometimes you'll have like a knee connect to the mouth so that the resin can cycle through instead of it having to try and come back out of the leg and into the head. Um, yeah, so the, it says, Gail's asking, how do you mold the insides of the legs if only two parts? So that's the inside of the leg and that's the inside of the leg. So because it's two parts, you're getting both sides of the leg just with the two parts. The only reason you need a third part or another part in the mold is if it's gonna be in a tricky spot. So if that leg was more closer to here, you would need that middle bit to get all the inside. This gets it all. You can see his bits in his belly right there. So it's a little hard to wrap your brain around the, the idea of how it all works. You only, like, as long as you can see both sides of it. So on this guy, you can see both sides of his legs. You only need the two sandwich parts there. Same as this. So that's why poses like this are a little bit easier to cast and why poses like this are not. 
because she's so 3D. There's like, how do you, you can't split this evenly in half like you would a coin, right? If you think about the idea of a coin and it being two-sided, that's really easy to mold. Um, once you start expanding into different dimensions and directions and doing different things with holes and faces, it gets way more complicated. So for her, she needed her middle part. Um, we did another section just for her face so that we would be able to replace it because this there's a lot of undercuts. Undercuts are anything that'll grab um, the silicone. Um, so if you have, like there's an undercut even just underneath her lip there. You can see there where it pulls, her lip pulls away from her teeth. So there's an undercut there. Everything in here, the mold's gonna wanna stick into. So there's ways of getting around it if you do a brush on mold and stuff, but it's pretty crazy. So yeah, but she goes in all the different directions. The legs almost cross there. They're on top of each other. So it's very complicated. And even the tail goes in multiple directions at once. It's a pretty wild ride. So yeah, this is way harder to cast <laughs> than this. This is much more be behaved. Hence the one has a lot more problems than the other. And yeah, so yeah, it's hard. It's, I, it's hard to explain the whole science of it. And it's really hard even if you understand some of it to wrap your brain around it. Because once you start getting into the more crazy poses, you're getting that angles meeting not 90 degrees that I was talking about before. So when you put pressure on that mold to seal everything, things are wanting to distort and pull in different directions because your lines for your mold aren't meeting 50-50. Um, so yeah, it becomes a bit of a crazy thing. You can see here how everything pretty well is flat. So the more flat your seams are, that pressure, it's not going to want to slide anywhere, which is what you want. And some poses are just more, more behaved and more able to be. Here, let's see if I can hold up both at the same time. Oh my God, that's a workout. Yeah, so there's your two halves of a pony. And then the thing at the top is where you pour your resin into and that just locks the um, little bung plug in there. So if for whatever reason it wants to fly out, it cannot because it just suck. And it's not a good picture when you start your rotocaster and resin's flinging out of it because it's spinning this way and spinning the other way. So it's rolling and rotating and yeah, it's just liquid resin everywhere it's been. Um, let's see. So I showed you the inside. We have nubbies, there are nubbies. Yeah, so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense about what the inside looks like. It's, yeah, it's very challenging to wrap your brain around how some of the physics of it works. So it's kind of cool. Um, you're welcome, Anna. Hey, Julia. Uh, how much resin do you use to hollow cast? How do you figure out? It's trial and error. Um, each horse will be its own amount. Um, Tater's about... I think it's six ounces of both parts. So about 12 ounces of resin to make a hollow cast. And then you have to be mindful of places where it might get a little bit thinner and then compensate for that. If you're not pouring fast enough, your resin inside snowballs and it's not an even coating on the inside and then you need a little bit more resin. So, and then if you're having a pose that's crazy, it's harder to get resin into all the little areas. It's very complicated. And that's not including the soft set amount. So that would be a little bit more than 12 ounces, but in about that. So it gives you a good idea, which is funny because that's as much resin as some medallions end up being <laughs> is 12 ounces. It's like, what the heck? Um, I think that for the, the bitey boys, the dust devils that I did, the two biting Mustangs, um, they were about as much resin as a traditional casting would be, which is crazy. It's very, very busy. Uh, kind of like a paint shaker with a pin hole. Ah, if you were spinning it, because it's not so much shaking it as it's like spinning it, like continuous stream out the hole. 
So yeah, there's that. So that would be our pulled main bang tail. And we have a second mold that we've poured, so I can't show you the actual horse, um, but I had shown you a picture of it the last time. So we'll do that. Uh, let's see if I go back here. Aha. Sir, so, you're not gonna be able to see this very easily. There, go like that. So that's the pulled main bag tail version. There he's got a saddle on. So that's the one that I just showed you the mold for. <laughs> Our five million pound mold. And then in the process of all the good things, and I will release the names in more detail soon. You guys don't get to, that's not your Easter egg this time, but soon. Um, this guy is, and he's really late. So <laughs> pick up a big 35 pound mold and it's like, oh, the horse is way nothing. So this guy, um, he has a little bit of sanding that I've done, but he is about to go into the mold. I will take final pictures of him and post those but you can see he's got his little bands going on in his forelock, excuse the dustiness, and then he'll soften up a little bit with the next layer of primer and the lights aren't gonna be very forgiving, but that's okay. We are looking for the braids, so it'll be fine. So you can see all the little bands there and his nice loose hair. I decided to go with the Loose banded, or the long banded version, just because it had a little bit more flow. Um, we don't see that very often in the hobby, which is not necessarily a bad thing, because it's a hard hair to do. So those will be really fun to paint when you start getting like Appaloosa and Pinto patterns and things where there's maybe like a frosty buckskin or gorilla where you get those guard hairs in there. That'll look really, really cool. There'll be a lot of fun for painters, I think. So he'll be cool. He's got the loose tail. Um, you could clean that up if you wanted it to be a little bit more like a bang tail and make it look a little bit more refined. I tried to make that an easy option for people that wanted to do something like that. He should be fun. I will be posting all the swag and stuff soon. Katie's here. Hi, Katie. Happy Easter. <laughs> I even gave you guys kind of like a five minute warning. Um, does that mean braided main tater is beginning molding? Yes. So this guy will go into a mold starting probably today or tomorrow. And then we'll start getting castings ready so that we can have batches of these guys ready. There'll probably be a batch of the pulled banged version before there's a batch of the banded version. And I'll kind of do it similarly. Um, there'll be one more batch of the cowboy tater, so our loose. Perfect. Oh, I not called them over? Of the loose version. So that's just the normal guy. He doesn't have the banding. Kind of a similar feel, because obviously similar pose. Well, same pose. Um, the hair would be kind of doing a similar thing, but you have the the lattice banding going on. Same tail though. So there'll be one more batch of these guys um, ready to ship, paid in full. I have a couple of the time payment ones to get out before I do that. And then I'll have those guys ready to go. We'll get them shipped off when we do the sale. Should be nice. I'm going to do the other ones the same way. So they'll be ready to ship batches that are available to purchase in full. And then there'll be a couple of time payment lotteries for both versions. And hopefully that covers everybody. I might do a lottery for paid and full ones at some point too. So you don't have to do the whole flailing, be there at a certain time, certain place thing. I might try that with the last of the um, cowboy taters. And then maybe the first batch of the pulled banged is maybe I'll try that and see how it goes. And then everybody who wants to have their name in the paid and full thing, um, we'll do a draw and then I'll pull names from that. And then that means you can have a couple of days to put your name in instead of the panic. I'm trying to 
to see what works and and give people a couple options because I know not everybody likes one or two or three of those. So, oh, Holly says I can't wait to get my tater. His ears are gonna get a little stretched. That'll be fun. I'm excited. That'll be cool. Um, Teresa's here. Where does she go? Let's see. Um, Brenda says I think when I get back to my cast, I'm gonna still have to figure out the mold process. Yeah, it's quite the the thing to try and figure out. Um, and then you're going to have to figure out what settings on everything you want. So Rotocaster, sometimes the settings are different for each horse and you have to figure out what each horse likes. And it's a wasteful process potentially in the first little bit. Um, we've had runs where we've tried a couple of times and nothing comes out and then we finally figure it out and then it works for, you know, the fifth cast down the line. Oh no, Julie has COVID. Mm, that sucks. Uh, there, we had a friend that just got COVID and lost their sense of smell and taste and all that stuff. It's still going around. Uh, but they've now classified it as just like a flu and they're treating it just like a flu. So I don't know how it's going to work from here going forward, but we will see. Sometimes doing a betadine gargle, um, or they have those sprays for the back of the throat, that'll help get rid of some of the viral load that you have going on and make you feel better faster, which... I mean, better, faster is always a good thing. So maybe look into that and see if that helps at all. Da, 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 da. Just catching up on comments. You guys are chatting lots. Hair prepping him would be very would be easy to achieve. Uh, your best bet for hair prepping would be the pulled banged, probably this guy. Because he doesn't have very much hair, you would just get rid of that. And then the tails on all of them don't leave a lot of impact on the bum. Um, I tried to avoid that and I tried to avoid the wrapping around the leg thing. I don't particularly like that look personally anyway. Um, I know that their tail will catch in their legs and get flinged around, but uh, it's it breaks up the feel to me um, and the movement. It kind of does disjarring things to my brain and I'm very about the feel part of it. So I made, and for customizing purposes, it's also a pain in the butt if it's wrapped around the leg. So this guy, if you wanted to take his tail off, um, you can see on, I'll switch it back. There's really not a lot of repair to do to the butt area and the pulled bang version isn't much different. You'll just get more of that neck definition. Um, but you could do it to whatever version you want, technically. Um, Facebook is a drill, says Katie. Uh, Laura's asking, do you guys want a battle corn to tater? And then Lizzie's like, yeah, battle corn everything. <laughs> Brenda's like, yes. Julia, yes. Everyone or someone needs to sculpt the horse falling down after going over a jump. That would be very traumatic, potentially. I've seen, I was at a cross country event, um, the only one I ever went to, and I watched a rotational fall. Everybody was okay, but it was terrifying. Um, I try... Yeah, it'd be like interesting biomechanically to see everything going everywhere. But yeah, there's some poses that are maybe a little bit more niche -y. Um, Mule tater definitely fits. <laughs> long in the tooth, long in the ear. Uh, there needs to be some sort of eye joke in there because they're potatoes have eyes. I don't know. It's not like mules have extra eyes like a spider with a whole bunch of eyeballs. Hi Sally! Sorry, Facebook is being a dink. I tried to give you guys a heads up, but it didn't work. Julia's like, oh, I have so much betadine because of horses. Yeah, I can't remember the dilution. I think it's like 10 milliliters of betadine to a couple of cups of water. Um, if I can find it, maybe I'll message you or try and look it up. Uh, but people have been doing it. Dentists were doing like an iodine, betadine type solution and gargling that all through COVID. And most of them didn't get any COVID. So it seemed to be helpful because you can catch the viral load while it's up here instead of it getting into all your bits. Um, and I have it on hand because of horses and it seemed to work really well for us. So there is that. Um, and I'm not a doctor. I will give the disclaimer, look up your stuff and do your own 
research, I guess. I don't want to get in trouble. Well, ban me because I mentioned betadine gargles. Um, but you can also get the sprays. They advertise, um, I think it's, oh, I can't remember what brand it is. It's like a spray for your throat. Same kind of idea. You're basically just sanitizing the back of your throat. Uh, salt water. Hot salt water also helps. Salt is killing of the bacteria things. Um, hi, Bobby. <laughs> We're talking about crazy stuff. Just straight painted you go hard. It would burn. And then gargling, if you're gargling it, it likes to make bubbles. So just hold like a tissue over your mouth. Um, I thought it was hilarious because it'd be like foamy rabies bubbles. And they're brown because it's betadine. My husband was like, what? Um, so yeah, there's exciting stuff coming. And then I still have, like I said, once we get to the end of our cowboy taters. Um, and... I guess I didn't factor in time payments. Oh, I want to do the thing, but there's time payments. Damn it. Okay, maybe I'll have to wait a little longer. I will ponder on that because I was going to do a thing once that we got the last of the paid and full taters for the cowboy tater version done and then do a draw within the people who have purchased cowboy tater for a special thing. But we have time payments and I want to make sure I include those people too. So I'll have to figure out what that looks like. But see so many complicated things. I just want to be fun and do the fun things. Um, Katie said, I ate dirt during COVID. You only live once. Ah, uh, there's a story there. Uh, e. Don Nels, hello. Excited for Venti Teater. Will you do one version of him? Also, do you use 3D to scale him down, then redefine him before casting or do a whole new sculpture? I have done both. Um... I've done versions where I've re-sculpted them and then I've done versions where I've scanned them and then I'll go in. I don't personally think that the scan quality that we get out of any of the scanners is good enough and the scanning place that I use has like a $75,000 meteorological scanner. So it's they do car parts with it and all sorts of really detailed stuff, but you're still not getting super fine details. So I go back into my scans and I what I call re-detail them. So I'll use ZBrush and I go in and I make sure all the details are crisp. That's why when they're shrunk or when they're big, um, they have good details. I did the um, same process with Morgan's um, smaller version of Max and Hazel and the mini Max and micro Hazel. Um, I did Tadpole for the micro version. Um, I helped with Anise for Jen Scott before she got all of her 3D printing stuff. So there's been a few that I've done that process on and it crisps up their de details a little bit, which is nice. I prefer it personally. Um, I don't like, especially when you get micros because you're primering them and all the details just kind of disappear anyways. Um, I'll go back in and redo that. So same process would be for Tater when I release them in Venti. I'm not sure on what I'm going to do for the hair versions, if I'm going to offer all of them or some of them or different ones or what that looks like just yet. But maybe I'll pull people and see what you guys think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat um, if you have a preference for what hair version you'd like to see in Venti on Tater because we have the three or if there's something different that I didn't do that you'd really like to see. And we will see what that looks like but yeah um sculpting them from scratch it while it can be done it's a little bit better use of an artist's time to scan it and print it versus totally re-sculpt it unless you wanted to tweak stuff i did that and tweak the version when i did the um mini version of jordy so he wasn't scanned and at that point scanning was really really expensive so i redid him and i wanted him to be different so i made him into a stallion and kind of changed the pose up a little bit and I don't like that as much so there's that and my eyeballs are also starting to get a little older so to keep everything true to form it's a little easier to scan it and it's a little easier to redetail like if I was doing the lattice in 3d it would have been so much easier because you can freeze the horse and then just put the little freaking bands on there and not have to worry about going back and forth as much but I think there's a different feel to when it's done by hand so there's that level of a different way to appreciate it. Every different version of how you sculpt something has its own pros and cons. So digital has pros and cons, traditional has pros and cons, all the different materials have pros and cons, everybody has their own preference. 
Um, Lizzie says, so wait, you scan, then print a 3D version, and then cast that. Yes. So that's how most of the, the mini versions of things are done nowadays, is if it was sculpted digitally, it's a lot easier because you have the file, and then you just shrink it. So the file can be made massive, it can be made small, it can be flipped, it can be cut in half and flipped so that the bum is doing the opposite thing, or you can take the head and move it and leave the rest of the body. There's all sorts of stuff you can do. Um, but most mini versions of everything that are done nowadays are done with a scanned version of whatever the sculpture was. And if it wasn't produced in 3D originally, like digitally originally, and then tweaked from there. So, uh, oh no, Katie said I tripped while I was plowing our garden face first because my arms derped. <laughs> There was a good story to that. Hi, Michelle. Um, Ohio dirt hits different, I bet. Holly's like, veggie tater! Mm, why were you plowing while you were dealing with COVID? Because <laughs> you have to plow. The garden does not wait to when you feel better. Uh, Brenda wants cowboy tater and Vinny. Venti. Donnie Enel's cowboy tater. I like the banded version, but I only purchased cowboy tater because I have them already. Aww. Then you'd have the big one and the little one. Um, Laura's saying, judge some fantastic micros last Saturday. Yeah, so the micros are getting really, really good, especially when you can sculpt something digitally huge versus having to use a microscope and <laughs> sculpt it in person, like in the size that it is. I actually have a micro over there that I should show you guys on a stream. I'll grab it now. Let's screw it. Hold on. I have two. So for something like this, it's better to use um, a green stuff or a green stuff mix because it just seems to deal with small details better. But this little guy is older but he is 100% sculpted in that size, which is really, really, really hard to do. And then you can see how it kind of works on the back. He's got little tiny wire legs, little, little tiny feetses. Oh. Let's see. There we go. You can kind of see stuff. So that was sculpting with a, mic a magnifying glass and trying to pray and see if that would work. I really, really like him. He's a really cool sculpture. But now you're stuck because you can't 3D print this in micro form. And to try and do a mold of this for resin sucks. And pewter, it's hard to find good people. Um, Maggie kind of has the monopoly on the guy that does that. And now stone, too, because they're using the same same person. Um, but yeah, it's very challenging to get from this now to a full sculpture of any sort. Um, it's easier to just do them digitally. And then my eyes don't cross. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to match the other side of this guy now. So there's that. But little wild dude. He might forever be just this size and half done. <laughs> and I don't know. Yeah, anyway, but there's that. So there's sculpting that. But if you're doing it digitally, you can blow the thing up to bigger than a traditional size to do all the detail, shrink it down. It looks amazing. So there is that benefit. And then I have El Dunko. I believe my little draft mule might. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I have the the guts to do casting this small, especially like he's got thicker legs. This guy's got like stupid tiny legs. So there's that. But I have many abandoned souls. Oh, come on, camera. There you go. Look at his face. Look at his draft mutant face. He's so cute. So I tried just normal epoxy and then I figured out that the details are a little bit easier when you do, I was a magic sculpt green stuff mix for that guy. So yeah, but let's see, is that gonna be that small? There we go. And keep in mind that is a finger and that is all sculpted by hand. He's kind of cool now that I see them. <laughs> 
<laughs> people are like, I take him just as he is. Yeah. So there's that. Um, but yeah, so most of your small versions of sculptures, whether it's, and even Briar, same thing, they scan them and then they shrink them. Um, that's how they're done. They're digitally either, if it's a digital file, it's easy to do whatever size you want. Um, if it's mirrored, same kind of deal, it's done digitally. It's not generally sculpted from scratch to match. Um, the technology is just too common and too easy and too cheap nowadays to not do it that way as a general rule. Um, eye twitching work. Yeah. It's like your eyeballs go crazy in my brain. My eyes don't, they're not linked properly inside of my head. So my right eye works and does its thing. And my left eye is like, <laughs> I don't see things. They don't work together very well. So to do really tiny things is extra strain on my right eye. And that causes all sorts of problems. So, <laughs> he's like, why haven't you released this mule? I have many long eerie things that I have plans for. It's just a matter of they haven't gotten there yet. And I've been dealing with the problem child. But that's okay. Everybody that ends up with a biter from that run is going to have the most special edition I will probably ever produce in my lifetime. So there's that. There's like extra love and benefit to her, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to look on the positive side. Heckin' <laughs> mini heckin' John grenaded. Yes, we do need a draft mule in the world. It will happen. I have a very special place in my heart for long years and mules, and I would like to have more of those. We have ride till dark. Hi. Uh, except the freaking ornaments. Yes. Long heckin' eerie boys. That is a thing that needs to happen. So there's that. Um, so I will do the same thing. Tater will get scanned, um, shrunk down and produced in Venti. That's how I'll probably do it. Still no plans at this point for micros. Um, I'll see. I'm still pondering on how I might do that. So there's that. Uh, what else do I have for you? Da, 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 da. Oh, someone was asking. I think I answered that. We're good. About the shrinking donk chunk draft. Do Wait, I vote the donk draft be given a shot. He's cute. He is cute. And it was funny because he was like a, I don't know. I was at one point like, do I do a mammoth? And then he'd be a micro mammoth. It'd be funny. A mammoth jack. But I really like draft. There's a one picture of an old man with an old giant draft mule and it's got the sweetest face and the old man looks so sweet and it's just it it holds a secret happy place in my heart so yeah it is possible to do tiny things Ooh, and spill all the liquids on my keyboard it is possible to do tiny things in traditional means but it is not as common because it is a pain in the butt let's see if i killed my keyboard hold on I'll do this without escaping. Uh, let me flip my keyboard upside down and try that. We are not playing with the TV. I did check to see if um, Briar had anything new. They still only have their blind bags um, and that was a thing that we all saw last time. I still think that they're going to show different things inside but we'll find out. Um, Mariah has, oh, she sold them. So there was a, Mariah, um, is a awesome artist and she had the scuttle up for auction and then put them up for a straight price. And now he has sold. He's very cute. Uh, and what else did I see on the internets? This popped up this morning. It is a chewy. The oldies are still kicking butt. See? Big heckin' Muley Chonker would be awesome. And I do have a Chewy V2 that has never gotten released because he's decided to sit on my shelf instead. That was going to be like a show version. And now we've had a couple of resins that have come out that have been showy versions of big chonky draft horses. And so I just didn't pursue him. 
because that happens a lot in the hobby where you get all excited about something and it's like, yeah, I'm going to do the thing. And then somebody else does similar and it's you either let it cool down or you just, you have half finished things that sit around. Not that there's necessarily something quite like that guy, but now that I've shown them, I put them in the universe. So who knows? Uh, I did see this and this is very exciting. This is a Red Roan version of Tater that popped up, and it was Lynn Castles Caldwell of Snowdrift Studios that is doing him. I believe that there might be something planned for Briar Fest for sales. So we will see, because that's the color I wanted him to be. Oh my god, she's like punking me. I swear. I swear it. But he's so pretty. Look at that. Just. There's so much good going on there. Ah, anyway. Um, what else was there? Here's our coming soon. So, I still have a feeling that these are going to be different. Because these, we've seen these before. Come on, Briar. Give us different things. So, that's a thing. Uh, yeah, so there's that. I think that's all that I had for today. I showed you guys the mold. I showed you the new tater. Um, <laughs> I showed you stuff I wasn't supposed to show you about micros. But that's okay. Um, let's see. Oh, Laura Rock Smith gave him that ribbon. That's cool. That's funny. And then Haley. Uh, Haley had a scuttle in progress. Let's see if we can go find it for you. Oh, I can't type. Mm. Okay. I can't use my keyboard because it is draining the fluids. So <laughs> if I can get to this just by clicking, then perfect. Uh, no, that one. I did post this to my page, so you guys have seen this before, but he's super cute. Look at the little expression on his face and his eyeball. I'm so excited. He's going to be so cool. So there's that. I had to show that. Um, so I'm going to try and maybe do that more often where I find things that have popped up through the week and show them off in the stream because it's kind of fun. Um, what's this week's hyper... Okay. So this week's hyper focus was I customized my pen and then I draw. I loved it. It wrote the best ever. Let's see if I can find my test. So it went from super tiny little lines to really, really giant big lines. It could do all the fancy stuff. I was just messing around with seeing if I could draw with it. Um, but to go from this to that is something that you don't see unless you get into like 14 karat gold nibs. And then I proceeded to, because it doesn't have any way to stop itself, put the pen down, it rolled off the desk and broke the tip. And now I can't seem to fix it. So I had a sad and I put the pen away, but I did get, <laughs> I'm gonna try and fix it later, but now I might break it if I pull the nib out anymore, which makes me sad. But there is potential in Frankensteining a pen. So there's, there's that hope, I guess. Oh, made me so sad, I cried. Um, I did another test. So this was the um, Apache Sunset or Southern Sunset by Noodlers that I like for a chrysalis color. That was the one I showed you guys last time where it's kind of like fire. And then I managed to get it a little closer. So it's got the gold sparkle, but it still does the color transition, maybe not to the same extent. So I might play with a little more and see if I can get more of that brightness out of it. But we're closer to a proper custom mixed Chrysalis Studios ink color that I will use on notes and stuff. So there's that. Um, what else did I find? Dur, 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 dur. I've been doing a gardening course. So some of my brain cells have been focused on that and I might have ordered lye to try making soap because if you guys have seen soap stuff, it is crazy. I'm gonna get you addicted to all sorts of crazy things. Um, 
Let's see if I can find a soap thing. So there's people that do the bars of soap and it's just crazy artistic. And let's see if I can find something. It's incredible what people are able to do. Like they do different colors. There's ones where they'll mold layers of it so that you get sand looking things and seashells and then you can put bees on it and honeycomb and mix all sorts of whatever you want inside of it it's just absolutely mind-blowing so there's that and then i've been trying to figure out how to get my garden to water itself <laughs> which is its own thing um i'm seeing food i'm seeing food i'm seeing ponies i'm seeing plants where did my soap go? I might not be able to find it without using my keyboard, which is still draining because I dumped coffee on it. Um, but yeah, I have a hydroponic setup um, that I'm working on little autofill. It's got a, um, so for my tomatoes, they'll grow hydroponically in water with the nutrients in it. And then I will have a float valve, kind of like a toilet. Um, you know how when it gets to a certain level, you flush and then it'll fill until it reaches a certain point. This go, yeah, here we go. Um, this does the same thing, except it'll fill the nutrients from a bigger reserve bucket of water so that I hopefully don't have to water that particular part of my garden because tomatoes go through tons of water um, for a while. And then while I'm at Briar Fest, my husband doesn't kill plants. Hopefully, we'll see how it goes. Um, there was, oh yeah, there was a scuttlebutt custom that Ashley was doing. I might have to load that up for next time. Oh, Briar has really, what? This part, okay, wait, wait, chat, what do you, what do you say? Um... Briars released them in the U.S. packaging and shows more of them. Tommy, we need pictures. They are re new releases, the same as the Canadian ones, but they all look new. Hmm. I need more information. Next week is Scuttlebutt Day. When the keyboard works. <laughs> It's very hard to navigate the internet if your keyboard does not work. I should share that, actually, the Scuttlebutt custom, I think. Are you going to make soap stuff from your garden? Maybe. I can put, I've got lavender in my garden. I've got a whole bunch of herbs that grow in my garden I can use. Um, should be really cool. But part of my brain was like, I'm curious about this. Because now there's a whole thing of your lye has to match your soap fat and then you can super fat which is making it more moisturizing but that's whatever the lye doesn't react with so it's a whole like chemistry chemical thing which is super fascinating um, you can use goat's milk or milk products you can use coconut you can use whatever combination of oils you want there's calculators that figure out what that works out to because each fat's a little different reactive with lye um, but it is a little intimidating because you mix lye with water and it is like lye is a pretty nasty substance just by itself but let me show you no cheese this week i did get a cheese thermometer so i could measure the temperature better so there's that but i have not gone into cheese i need more um bacterial cultures but check this out <laughs> this is soap they are using like cupcake molds and molds for uh, cactuses, uh, cacti, and I'm obsessed right now. They're just so pretty. Like you can swirl it and do different cool color patterns. People are molding in different shapes using different combinations of things. Like this is like a squirrel in the wood. Um, I like how we've got our super fans. I just stick around for the hyperfixation part. Uh, there's people that do really neat things like that. Uh, this is a carrot based soap. So they're using a carrot mix, which is crazy. Beautiful soap flowers like they used to make. Um, oatmeal, different colors. There's your soap calculator. It tells you how much, how hard it'll be, how cleansing it'll be, how conditioning it'll be, how bubbly, um, creamy, if there's iodine in it. And so you can tweak it to make whatever kind of soap you want. If you want like a degreasing soap, it would be a little different mix than if you wanted something that's super bubbly and foamy. Um, 
Let's see if I can find the B one. That was the craziest one I saw. Pardon my scrolling. It's potty soap! So you can totally do it with medallions like uh, Kylie was having her one friend do. There's people that use flowers in it, sparkles in it. Yeah, it's just absolutely incredible. Kitty soap with the moon. Where is the... There was one with bees that was incredible. Ah, man. So different little molded on designs. Mm. So this person's making bees out of soap. So doing the different colors. They make like... And then they're popping it out. Yeah. Ta -da. Oh, but yeah, like, look at how pretty these are. How can you not love this? I don't know. I'm, it's just fascinating to me. I didn't realize that there was a whole thing. It's like book binding. There's a whole thing on how to do the leather and how to do the gilding and how to properly sew all the um, signatures, which are the sections of pages and all sorts of crazy stuff. And then you look online and people are auctioning their books off for like $3,000. And we think horses are crazy. There's a, an endless amount of super hobbies that people do amazing things. And this world is very cool. So there's that. Um, oops. Oh, no. I can't click on it. Uh, Briarhorses.com collections, unicorn, crazy spread bag. but they're available to order, unlike the Kennedy ones. Huh. I will have to find out how this works. Uh, this not being able to use my button thing sucks. I will figure out my keyboard later. Anyway, I will not go, I can't click on the link, damn it. So Tomi put a link in the chat that ha says that you, the stable mates have the same picture, but they're available to order unlike the Canadian ones. So we will see. Um, yeah, I could totally use my medallions and I could do colored ones where the horses are colored or all sorts of crazy stuff. So uh, any resin molds would make would work for soap. Yeah, so silicone, um, anything that's silicone based you can use for soap. The one that I was thinking of had honeycomb and little bees and then it looked like honey dripping over the top. It was so pretty. We never want to use the soap though. Carol's saying, I remember lye soap grandmother made. Yeah, but there's a little, like, I'm sure that there's awesome recipes back then, but it's just, I think people, there's a bad association with lye soap and it being some sort of harsh thing it doesn't have to be you can mix it with all sorts of cool stuff um soap with succulents on top gorgeous soap the woman who started the shop passed away family didn't have the passion to keep it going so they closed that sucks sometimes it's just one person at the heart of it and if they're gone then that's the end of it which is unfortunate um someone took all the wheel of time books and bound them together i remember it was like a giant stack of like the biggest amount of books possible. It would be like trying to buy, yeah. Anyway, there's some sort of Lord of the Ring quote in there of being like, we took all the books and bind them. <laughs> um, but yeah, super, super cool. Oh, I would not want lye soap in my mouth. It would suck. I got my mouth washed out as a kid quite often. So anyway, to all of you awesome, like 17 or 18 people that stuck to the end through the hyperfixations, um, thank you. It's very exciting to be able to share that part because it's kind of cool. Um, I will, I'm going to be making a food forest in my yard, which means it's going to look really nice, hopefully. And then I will have food that'll come from it instead of just ornamental plants, but there will be ornamental plants mixed in there. And I'm learning about all sorts of cool stuff. So I'll share that as we go along through summertime. I've got a whole bunch of babies started. Um, I was growing something weird. I have a eucalyptus that I've started to stay inside. I have an alpine white strawberry. 
um, and all sorts of really interesting things. So it'll be neat to see how things work together and then you can plants together with other plants and it'll be kind of fun. So there will be that adventure and then hopefully I'll get the perfect custom mix of ink and we can go and do awesome things. But on that note, I will let you guys go on your awesome Easter. Have fun. Go out, enjoy the sunshine, spread some love, good cheer, all of that universal, soulful goodness um, that we look to share on Easter, whether you're religious or not. Um, and yeah, go from there. Maybe paint some eggs, do something cool, splash some color around. I can't play with those things or I'll just end up covered in different colors permanently for the next little bit. But I might end up doing some giveaways of stuff if I end up making pony soap. So stay tuned. And I did order those pen molds, but they didn't get here yet. So when I do pony pens, I will let you guys know for that as well. All right. I will love you guys forever, but I will see you guys hopefully next Sunday. And then we'll see. I'll let you know when the next batch taters is. I've just pushed it out just because of Easter. I didn't want to do it on Easter weekend, but I'll probably do it as a lottery and I'll post more information on that and when i have the name reveals ready for you that as well so i'll see you next time don't feed trolls they're still on a diet maybe they can start a garden and feed themselves healthy things and they'll get less grumpy because maybe it's like indigestion or something that makes them dicks i don't know but happy easter love you guys i will see you next time